Sim, nós entrevistamos parte do elenco de Os Anéis de Poder. Olá, meus queridos e minhas queridas Tolkien Talkers. Antes de começarmos esse bate-papo, sabe como é que é? Deixa aquele like, clica aqui embaixo, se inscreve no canal e do lado clica no sininho, fica de olho nas notifications. Aproveita para fechar mesmo, para ajudar a nós assim, ficar fechado com nós. Deixa aquele comentário, aquele ponto, aquela frase, qualquer coisa aqui só para a gente subir na relevância do YouTube. No dia 12 de agosto de 2024, eu fui convidado para a premiere de Os Anéis de Poder, a segunda temporada. Nesse evento, a gente pôde assistir os dois primeiros episódios da série e também bater o papo com quatro pessoas do elenco, né? quatro atores e também com uma das diretoras. Infelizmente, o áudio ficou muito ruim, porque estava uma barulheira, eu tentei falar perto do microfone, o microfone estourou. Então o que a gente fez? A gente colocou o áudio do jeito que está e a gente legendou do lado. Então pelo menos você vai saber o que a gente está falando. Se te irritar que o áudio está ruim, paciência, deixa no mudo e só lê a, o que está escrito ali, porque o conteúdo está muito legal. Nós fizemos uma pergunta para cada um deles, então a gente teve que escolher muito bem as perguntas, mas acho que vocês vão gostar. Quero deixar aqui o meu grande agradecimento ao Augusto Ornelas, porque ele que me ajudou a fazer a tradução bonitinha e depois ainda fez essas legendas, essa transcrição das respostas. Muito obrigado, Augustinho. Então, sem mais delongas, vamos lá e espero que vocês gostem. You practicing a sum of Portuguese? Oh, yes, I, yes, I was, yes. But I have to say, perdoe meu português. Mas é um prazer estar aqui neste belo país. Your Portuguese is amazing. Trust me. Well, I have a question for you. By the way, your English is incredible, by the way. It's, it's not, it's it not. Is better than my Portuguese. You are so charming. No, get away, no. You, you don't need it. You, you are right to seduce me. Uh, Tristan, uh, Farazon was the proudest of all the Numenorean kings. Yes. However, so far in the series, we have seen him being very discreet and cautious in his actions. Yes. What you can tell about the huge metamorphosis to come to his into the tragic megalomaniac described in the books? Well, I, I think um, because in the first series we saw him because he's not the heir to the throne. So we see him in the role of chancellor, but he's so much more than that. He comes from a line of warriors, a line of sea captains. He's a politician, a philosopher, a natural born leader like his father, Gimilcad was, and his grandfather, Aral Zilidu, in Zilidu. So, you know, he, he has to exercise impulse control because he's not in charge of the island. He is in all but name. Yeah. But you know, it's not quite the same thing. So sometimes you can't really follow your true instincts. And you cannot be as impulsive as maybe everybody else is. You need to wait a little. Exactly. You need to exercise a lot of control. Be very staid, calm and have a grip of your emotions. Now, of course, we will see there's a power vacuum. And the pride of Numenor has taken a big knock. And that's because our queen, or queen regent, was very impulsive and followed in helping the battle. Is she really the right person to lead that island? You know, there's a lot of questions that need asking, and you're going to need somebody who's, well, seen to be very in control and can, has the respect of the people of Numenor to maybe lead that, those people. We need to see this transformation, but we, we need to wait, right? I think so, yes. It's, uh, yes, uh, you need to wait for it, but yes, it's there. Perfect, thank you. I thought you were going to learn more Portuguese with your wife. Oh, yeah. Well, well I know all the curse words. Yeah. She shouts in the it's important ones. Yeah, exactly. It's very important. Um, you still speak uh, Portuguese more than I do. In the books, we get to learn much less than one could have wished about the High King Gilgalad. Yeah. But we do know that Kirtan basically raising him as a son, being a, as much as a father figure for the King of the Elves. Will we be able to get a glimpse into that relationship starting in the second season? 
Does Google look it up to the old ship right for wisdom and advice? You do get a glimpse into that relationship, but also you get an understanding of the pressures of being king when you're raised by someone, but then actually you are a higher rank. How do you navigate? Manage that. Yeah. It's, it's like when um, you become a parent to your parents. How do you do that? We all understand what that means. Good, good comparison. I understand. So, we can uh, see more scenes between you and Kirdan. Well, he gets the first of the three rings. Yeah, definitely. Is your Portuguese now? Just boa noite or obrigado too? Obrigado as well. Um, tudo bem, bom dia. It's a good one. Nice, nice one. Megan, I have just one question for you. Your character, Poppy Broadfellow, embodies all the sweetness of the little folk. And oh, episode 5, we found out that you are an amazing singer. Your song, The Wandering Day, brings us elements of Bilbo Baggins in Spawns on the Lord of the Rings. By the way, fans all over much prefer the version with your voice to the one that show used during the credits. Could you tell us about the song and the experience to sing? I mean, it was, I mean, what an experience. I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, and then I went to karaoke. Right. With Jay Bayona. Right. With the Bayona brothers and JD and Patrick, our showrunners were there. And um, J.A. put on Suddenly Seymour, the song Suddenly Seymour. Um, and he handed me the second microphone, and we duetted to that. Right. And then the next day, I got a phone call from Patrick, and he was like, "Do you want to sing in the show?" And I was like, "Yes, I want to sing in the show." And then that was it. JD wrote the incredible lyrics for that song, um, and we worked with Plan Nine, who also worked on the music for the original movie, um, and then worked with the incredible Ben McCreary. And it, it was just such a wonderful. I've never like recorded anything professionally or so it was a really interesting experience, and it was so lovely to be conducted by such a master that is Ben McCreary. And it is one of the best beginnings of the episodes of the season. It's so sweet. Congratulations. Hi, Marcella. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? Very fine. First, I want to make some questions for you. So ask your autograph because I did get it in 2002 London okay. and a selfie, right? Two wishes in two minutes. No worries. In 1937, when The Hobbit became a success, yes. Tolkien's publishers urged him to come up with a new adventure for Bilbo, Belsair in Middle Earth. He ended up taking a whole different approach to writing The Lord of the Rings instead. A big one, not a billable one. Could Mary represent that wish of the readers back then? A clever and a curious young hobbit setting out on adventures to unknown places with a company of a wizards. Have you ever thought of it all in these terms? Wow, I mean, that's an amazing quote and, and a really interesting question. I think I would say... I mean, she definitely is a curious halfway, and she's going in Bobby and wants to explore the unknown. So I hope that that is something she represents, is being uh, this halfway that loves adventure, loves hope, loves hoping and being hopeful for a better world. And so I think I would say she's a halfway that loves and, 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 um, and seeks out adventure and new journeys and meeting new characters and beings in Middle Earth and uh, so hopefully that does complement that. Yeah. It's a kind of a, a, a Bilbo ones but with your own spice. Yeah, and so set so way before that time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You are most beautiful person than in the pictures. Sana, 
Welcome to Brazil. We saw on your Instagram stories. It isn't your first time down here, right? It is not my first time in Brazil. I've been to Sao Paulo before and to Rio, and I always love coming down here because everybody's so warm and inviting, and you know, I just really love it. Perfect. I have one more, one more question. In season one, each director showcased their own personal vision and style quite clearly, sometimes leading to pronounced difference as episodes went on. Style difference. Will that continue during season two, or did you and your colleagues in the direction team think of more cohesive style common of all of you? I think season two has a cohesive style. Um, there are three directors. Uh, I'm one of them. So I feel like, you know, we really worked well in terms of creating the look and making sure that it was the same language. I mean, that's part of the series, is having the same language, as well as filmmakers have to bring their own thing, but it can't be so different. You know, it has to have its own um, element to it. So I feel I'm very proud of all the episodes and of all the, the work that we all did. You, you think about 50-50, creation and cohesive liberty. I think for me, as a filmmaker, the content dictates how it is shot. And it's within the umbrella of the show and of kind of the style of the show. So I think that's the, the way that I think about it and hopefully it translates on camera. Perfect, I agree. Brazil, just be sure, it's mutual. Oh. We are in love with you. Our Baiano, Baiano. our Capoeirista. And 2022, you come to Brazil, and I was um, unable to go into the party. And you make some video, send me a hug. Yeah. Oh. You, you're so kind wow. with this. Thank you very much, very kind. I have one question for you, please. It's been said that it's been said that Arondin asking the tree for forgiveness on episode three last season wasn't original written on the screenplay, and you were the one to come up with that idea. Did it? Did it really happen? It's so elvish. Yes. Um. I when I was auditioning. Um, I, I did not know that I was playing a, a, an elf. They, almost like six months that I was auditioning. They told me that I would be an elf uh, the night before. And I was I was practicing in the park before, and I went back to the park when they told me I was an elf. And I was doing, I started to feel, I was like, an elf wouldn't cut a tree yeah. with this much ease. This connection. No, this and it's, uh, it's something that is very familiar to me. I love nature. I would never cut a tree, you know, with my, I couldn't. It's like cutting my mother, you know? So when I did that, I couldn't, I said, I have to ask for forgiveness. I have to get emotional. I have to touch the tree. And I did it. And I did not know how to speak Elvis in that time. So I made something up, but I prayed over the tree. And then when I went and did my audition, my final audition with everyone else, I did it. I took a moment. I prayed for it, and they loved it, and now I'm on there, and now it's in the show. It's the best scene of the episode for me. It's very elvish, very Tolkien-ish. E aí, vocês gostaram? A gente escolheu a dedo cada uma das perguntas. Afinal, coitados, eles devem responder as mesmas perguntas óbvias para todo lugar. E a gente tinha que sair do óbvio, né? Então a gente trouxe aí coisas bem específicas que eu acho que é que todo mundo aqui do TT quer saber. Uma coisa que chamou muita atenção foi o esforço deles falarem em português e o carisma. Todo mundo muito animado, feliz de estar ali, com vontade de responder. Enfim, foi assim, foi uma grande festa, várias pessoas estavam ali e valeu muito a pena, assim carisma nível 11 para eles. Eu acho que esse bom humor também vem porque a primeira temporada teve um grande sucesso e agora a segunda temporada vai ter muito mais ritmo que a gente está vendo agora né, no desenvolvimento dela. Então acho que eles já estavam vendo que ia dar mais certo, ia dar mais jogo. Espero que na terceira, que já foi confirmada, né, afinal vão ser cinco, eles estejam ainda mais felizes para a gente ir lá de novo. 
Se você gostou do conteúdo, deixa aqui o um comentário o que, que você gostou, quem que você achou mais engraçado, mais desenvolto, né? Obviamente o Ismael, é, ele ganha um pouco de todo mundo, mas ainda assim você pode aqui escolher quem que você gostou ou a frase que você mais gostou, né? Lembrando que você pode ajudar o TT de diversas maneiras, mas a mais simples é comentando, curtindo, compartilhando, deixando aqui a sua notificação ligadinha, né? Se você não é inscrito, se inscreve, manda pro seu amigo, ajuda a nós aí da gente dar aquela crescida, beleza? Espero que vocês tenham gostado desse TT. Deixo aqui meu grande abraço. Na Maria.